Verse number 18, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. And again, he just keeps bringing this up. They're my enemies wrongfully. I didn't do anything to them. They hate me without a cause. Verse 20, for they speak not peace, but they de devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. And th these are the people that just won't leave you alone, right? It's like, I'm trying to live peaceably. I'm just trying to live my life. I'm trying to do what's right. And you know, this is the typical, you know, the, the wicked politicians. It's like, you just want to live your life. I want to go to work. I want to provide for my family. I want to, I want to work a job, make some money. And then here they come and oh, oh how much you making? No, you need to give me some of that. And you, you know, Leave me alone. Amen. Leave me alone. Right. Don't tell me how much soda I could drink. <laughs> don't tell me what foods I can eat and can't eat. I don't need your stamp of approval on everything. Leave me alone. Amen. I want to live my life peaceably. But you know there's people out there that just won't let you do that. And when you serve the Lord, there's going to be a lot more of that. I mean, we see it when we go out and try to preach the gospel. Most people, okay, right? We'll knock on some doors. Oh, no, thanks. I'm not really interested. No, I'm another religion. No, I don't, you know, and we can live peaceably. Okay, great. Thanks. Take care. You know, no worries. No problem. But then you got the people. What are you doing? Hey, don't you go knock on that door. Oh, what do you think you're doing? Oh, you know, I'm going to go call you know, and just... Just can't just leave you alone. Like, look, let me do my thing. You do your thing. They don't speak peace. You get people that could get real, you know, I mean, it doesn't, again, I'm thankfully it doesn't happen very often, but I expect it as the love of many waxes cold as we get closer to the day of Christ that it will be more common. They devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. People just trying to do their own thing and be quiet. No, nope, got someone's always got to try to mess it up. Verse 21, Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, all right, I've seen it. Again, these false witnesses, right? Ah, we got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Caught you outside without a mask. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Off to jail. You were doing 36 and a 35. I got gotcha. you. Look, I'm just trying to go to church, man. <laughs> Leave me alone. Which literally happened to someone in our congregation trying to come to church, getting pulled over for you know, whatever. Stupid thing. It's all for your own safety. Verse 22, this thou hast seen. See, look, at, they say, all right, seen it. We saw it. And then, and then he goes, you know what, God, you've seen this. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silence, O Lord. Be not far from me. They're trying to bring these false witnesses saying, oh yeah, we see, see we, we caught you, we got you. God, you saw it. You know what's going on. You know I didn't do this. Don't be silent, Lord. Defend me. Help me out here. Verse 23, stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. And I just want to point this out because we, you know, we've gone over already the point of how Matthew 5, Jesus was saying to love your enemies, and we saw it in Romans 12, and we saw it in this passage as well, right? These, these passages that talk about doing good unto people that are your enemies and, and your adversaries and things like that. But how much of this psalm is not talking about good for the people who are wicked? And how much of the other psalms that we've been reading are not talking about good for the people who do wicked. And just the Bible as a whole, okay, keep that in mind. Yes, we need to overcome evil with good. Yes, we need to be able to fight against our flesh in that way. Yes, we need to pray for people, our enemies and things like that, and people do wrong. Look, I've got some, I, you know, in my own personal life, there's someone that's just not just, just an enemy to me, an adversary, that for whatever reason, I don't even know why, and it's not just me, it's, it's other people too. It's not, you know, this isn't even just like a reason of my faith or something like that. There's just sometimes you have people in your life that are your enemies. 
right? And there's someone in my life that, that just treats me like an enemy. Lying, just whatever, all kinds of different things. But I'm not just wishing all, you know, trying to curse him and things like that. I don't. Because that's not an appropriate time or place in, in, in you know, everything considered what's going on. I'm going to do good to that person. I'm going to do right by him. And I'm going to continue to try to do good, even though they're my enemy, even though they may try to persecute me or whatever and, and have caused bad things to happen to me. But when you have, you know, the reprobate that's trying to, like, get you, you know, whatever, killed or, get, you know, trying to, to get your family destroyed or, what you know, setting those types of traps for you, I'm not going to be blessing those people. 